DJ Taco. Drop it. Yeah. Come on. Boom, clap, boom, 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 clap. So uh, welcome to the 44th episode of Tokyo Alumni Podcast. Today, our guest graduated from St. Mary's International School in the early 90s. He is a Japanese hip-hop recording artist, DJ, and record producer who debuted in 1997 as a record producer of the hip-hop group M-Flow. He was also a member of AVEX's 20th Century Dance Music Project, Ravix, and has produced songs for musicians such as Crystal K, Ami Suzuki, and Ria Fu, and remixes for Hiraku Utada, Ayumi Hamazaki. He formed the record labels Takatelic Tech, Records and TCY Recording. Many in the audience may know him for his hit songs such as Come Again, Let Go, and Love Bug. Welcome to the podcast, Taka. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. And so today, in honor of sort of the, uh, this podcast being more oriented towards St. Mary's ASIJ alumni, I think the first half will focus more on that aspect, sort of the INTA perspective. And then the yeah, second sure, half, um, if you would like to explore, you know, sort of more of your, you know, professional work, like the work you do with FM and the work you do, block it with, the work, sorry, the work you do with FM, yeah, block FM and the work just in general in regards to sort of straddling mm-hmm. the music scene in the US versus Japan. Let's rewind the clock though, way back to when you first meet uh, Verbal, right? Real name, Ryu. So can you tell us a little bit about how you two met and, you know, was this a musical encounter or was this just a random encounter at the, you know, recess time? Verbal, also known as Young Ki Yu, um, was my classmate since fifth grade. So um, we, we never did music together until high school. And, and we never really hang out. Really? So you guys music. weren't really yeah. like buddies. You just kind of knew mm. each other for a while. Then what re- really instigated you guys to sort of collaborate your, in regards to your first sort of big music project, NMD? Like what mm-hmm. was yeah. it you who, who in, initiated it? Or was there like a mutual friend? What got you guys started? Well, I, I knew Verbal was writing lyrics for rap. And I was uh, a DJ and also a drummer. So um, I just simply asked him, would you want to rap together? And he's like, sure. And it just happened. That's how I started. <laughs> Tracks, I made the music part and Virgo was writing lyrics. And um, so we were doing a group called NMD in high school. And apparently we, uh, it was like a mix. It was kind of an interesting, very unique group because uh, the vocalist was a rapper. I played drums while using computer sequencer. And we had guitarist, uh, Rishi Jane. Um, Rishi Jane is also class of 93. And uh, Hikaru Wyckoff, also known as uh, John, Hikaru John Wyckoff, uh, who was uh, son of Mr. Wyckoff in fifth grade. And uh, he was, he's class of 94-ish, uh, but he got, I think he got kicked out or something. I forgot. <laughs> 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 I think he got. I, if I'm wrong, not sorry, enough, Hikaru. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have like we we have mutual friends, but we never had a chance to meet up for a while. But Hika, Hikaru is mm-hmm. a, a very very uh, wonderful person, wonderful guy. But I guess he, I don't know. Um, if I'm wrong, um, so, uh, uh, just to everyone, if I'm wrong, sorry. But anyways, <laughs> um, Hikaru Wyckoff was uh, playing bass, and it was like a rock music mixed together with hip hop, and we uh, what we. Did was we played at Battle of the uh, Battle of the Bands at ASIJ. Verbal became like uh, number one singer, and there was a controversy because like it, it was like a very rock and roll um, era where like people did not um, uh, accept a rapper being a best sing- best vocalist. Mm. It was kind of kind of controversial back then, but we were always you know trying to uh, figure out something different and new. And of course, there's always you know uh, something that we need to encounter, which is like uh, uh, people who's not really ready for change. So we've been experiencing that for a lot. And at the same time, um, Verbal was very uh, energetic in a sense, tried to expand the group as much as possible. So he uh, sent a demo tape to the TV uh, show. And when we performed on the TV show, we got uh, 
four or five record uh, major record uh, deals, but but um, but we were not really interested in becoming musicians. We mm. were more interested in going to college, so we never actually debuted back then. Wow. So yeah, you, you were getting these like official record label offers as high schoolers. Yeah, we got we got um, deal from. Um, I think it was Warner and uh, there was no Avex back. There was Avex, but a Warner, um, uh, Four Life Records, and some other two. I, I I forgot, but like our main concern was to go to college. So it was it was it was very it was honor. We were honoring, but mm. I wanted to study physics. Verbal wanted to study business, and Rishi wanted to study uh, what what should we call it? Um, uh, pre pre med. Um. Rishi is now, uh, he works for a, a pharmaceutical company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but we all decided to go to college. But Fervo and I kept on contacting each other. And, you know, we met w- once in a while during summer's, um, summer vacation or winter vacation. And we, we kept on recording music. And, uh, and we also said, oh, before that, I decided to come back to Japan. Mm. Um, uh, I was, I'm still taking semesters off from college, by the way. <laughs> oh really? So you're still a college student? <laughs> um, maybe. <laughs> I, I went to a small liberal arts uh, college called Occidental. Mm. People may know that um, university or a college for um, uh, President Obama. Mm. He used yeah, to go yeah. there. He yeah, I think he didn't do well in high school, and he went to Occidental. And there's this thing called three two program in Occidental. And mm. if you uh, are in Occidental for three years, then you can go to um, Columbia or MIT, Caltech. Three years of Occidental, you'll become um, junior at the at Columbia. So that's what he did. Interesting. But anyways, um, I'm like I'm going back and forth. But so I was at Occidental College, but I decided to go back to Japan because I actually wanted to do music. And every time when verbal, but. Actually, a couple of times we, you know, recorded stuff together, and um, um, and the record uh, company listened to our music and they loved it, and that's how it got start started. And the rest is history. So when you were in California, I know it was only a few years, but you were there, sort of in the quote unquote golden age of hip hop, right? And I think you're on record for saying uh, Tribe Called Quest is is one of your favorite, if not your favorite, group. So uh, it is, it is Quest. I was going to say, apart from them, were there any other influences from that era that you felt like you took back to Japan? Um, good question, Nick. Um, I was very into hip hop, but at the same time, I, I had the love for house music. Mm. Um, so I listened to a lot of New York house. And the, the, uh, the irony yeah. about this is that I lived in California. And this is a time when Snoop Doggy Dog was getting really huge. Like you listen to... Snoop or Dr. Dre or um, Coolio, like every ten minutes in every radio station, and you don't you don't get to listen to New York um, East Coast hip hop in California. I was rather frustrated in a way, mm. because um, uh, yeah, I, I can now listen to West Coast hip hop. I think it's cool, but back back in the day, I was, you know, just you know, you know how it, when, if you live in the U.S., they keep on playing the same stuff over and over, so you get sick and tired. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, so I, I was really into East Coast hip hop, East Coast house music, and also at the same time I realized how Japan was evolving uh, musically too. Like all this stuff was very like J pop, but, but like there were a lot of groups from Japan um, trying to go like not not trying to go um, being um, creating something international. There was Shinichi Osawa's Monde Grosso, UFO. Um, fantastic plastic machine, Pizzicato Five. Um, those people were creating music, and I could buy those people's vinyl records in U.S. and I was very proud of that. That's another influence I got. So I got influence from from both Japanese underground scene and um, U.S. Uh, hip hop and uh, U.S. house in the East Coast. And also, um, I was uh, um, searching for like the uk i'm very um influenced from uk on drum and bass what type of artists from the uk and and germany were especially prominent during that that era so uk drum and bass my favorite artist is ronnie size r-o-n-i-s-i-z-e he's like the one of the um 
he's not the founder, but he is like one of the very influential drum and bass artists. He still is. Very nice person. Well, speaking of M Flow's music, I know you guys have a long span and quite a few songs, but are there any songs that、um, your like, international school, Kohai, come up to you and go, like, that's my jam? Like, this is the song we sing at karaoke all the time. You know what? I never. So, Nick, I've never heard anything about M Flow from my Kohais. Really? Okay. Because、yeah. I was going to say. Um, the first time I was introduced to, to you, you guys' music was I was at a karaoke session back in the this must have been mid, mid early 2000s. And、mm-hmm. I was with St. Mary's friends, and they were really proudly singing、uh, the song Let Go. And、oh, wow. <laughs> that's, yeah. And then, and then from there on, whenever I, I started hanging out, you know how it is. Like, you know, once you start hanging out with other schools, kids, you know, everyone kind of、mm-hmm. realizes we're all the same. And I continued、wow. to hang out with that group. And it was always Let Go was part of that, you know. <laughs> People always have those 20 songs that they always do. And that was well, I'm, I'm very honored. Wow. Well, it's really cool that I'm speaking to the person behind that song right now, too. I'm,、uh, I'm, really, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to know this information because I really never had a chance to get to hear what people are thinking about us. I mean, just at least from, from my. Especially from international school. Like my little niche, my, I was、uh, 2005. I think it was、mm-hmm. kind of a big thing because Utada Hikaru was about four years older than me. So between、mm-hmm. Senmet and SIJ, it was kind of like, well, we have Utada Hikaru and they were like, but we have M Flow. You know? <laughs> and、yeah. Everyone was like, you know, who's seeing who has the best artist. But it was,、um, mm-hmm. I think it connects well into the, the next question about international school you know, graduates and musicians、mm-hmm. in the music industry. So, you know, there's Utada、mm-hmm. Hikaru. Jesse McFadden from Rise, Shen from Def Tech, Crystal K. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And I was wondering, you, you're you know, one of the pioneers, basically, who, of, of that, you know, of the people I just mentioned, you preceded all of them. So since you started in the music industry in the 90s, have you seen an influx, like an increase of international school graduates in the industry? Or is it just sort of my image? Actually, yeah, I think we are one of the first alumni who, who start to be involved in the music industry. And there are lot, several other kids after us. I think it's just it's about timing, I guess. You I mean, usually, your if, kids to international school, you, 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 or if you're a parent, you would expect them to go to Merrill Lynch or I don't know, some, <laughs> some big companies. <laughs> Or、That's、become a doctor or a lawyer. And that, apparently, my. my oh, sorry. No, I, I, think, I think you were about to answer. I was going to say, was that your parents' intentions? That, you know, exactly, they, they exactly. Your, in, Are you、uh, a psychic? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just think it's what,、uh, it just seems to be what all the parents' expectations are. And,、um, but it's incredibly interesting how many people have gone towards art and music, especially the last you know, 10, 20 years.、Um, so, my. Yeah, my, I, my first intention to go to college was to learn physics and become an engineer for a roller coaster. It's totally different then. <laughs> totally different, yes. <laughs> But、um, apparently, my parents were very, very supportive、um, for me doing music. They,、um, especially my mom,、um, she really thought I should do music. She even.、Um, Recommended me to go to music school instead of、um, college. Or actually, she,、uh, she asked me, why don't you go to Berkeley? And I'm like, nah. Wow. So th- that, that must have been a, a major I feel, component towards your success, too, is that you didn't have parents that were like pushing you towards finance or you know,、um, medicine, and they're very supportive of your music career. And I, I wonder if that is the case with these other、uh, INTA graduates. And, Maybe、um, I'll find out hopefully when I, when I interview them one day.、Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like, on contrary, Verbal's parents were not really、uh, fond of him doing、um, music at first.、Uh, how, um, how much against were they? were they? I mean, they never like, forced him to stop, but they weren't really happy in the beginning. They were worried.、Mm-hmm. And I, I wouldn't blame them. I mean, it is a very.、Um, Competitive、um, profession. But, but my perspective is any profession is c- competitive.、Mm. Like, even you go to like law firm or if you go to Gaishike company, how do you,、um, 
we call it Guys K Company in Japan, but where Kin、uh, Uke,、uh, um, um, anywhere you go, it's, it's always competitive. So,、um, and also, it's,、uh, since what I'm doing is in, in art, I have some things that I would like to、um, uh, propose or I would like to express. And、mm-hmm. not nece- like something that I want to express does not necessarily be、uh, pleasing for mass,、uh, a lot of people. So、mm-hmm. it, it, it is a risk. I see the risk there, but we were fortunate. The timing was exactly right. I mean, we could do whatever we want to do, and people were expecting that. So we were very lucky. And I guess the last、fortunate. thing I want to touch on is、uh, for the sort of the Inta angle. Is it、mm-hmm. towards your Kohai? Not just Seme, but as I've said in the podcast, where I feel like we're sort of a community, you know, Seme, SIJ, Seisen, Sacred Heart. Yeah, well, we, well, yeah, well SIJ is my rival. <laughs> 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 you know, Mustang, Sidon. I'm just yeah, kidding. Well, yeah. But、uh, going back to what I was saying about, you know, so to all those Kohai, what would be、mm-hmm. advice you'd give towards either a current high school student going to an INTA? Or、uh, someone who's graduated INTA and is in college or early in their career, if they're thinking about being part of the music industry, whether it's from the producer side or from the creator,、uh, creating, creator side? I think there's a big advantage for international school kids in Japan,、uh, sincerely, because、um, you learn the Japanese culture at the same time you learn English. So you get, Japan is like a, a melting pot of information. Let's say,、um, although Japan is getting weaker and weaker every year, I'm, I'm very、um, worried about that. But,、mm-hmm. um, but still,、um, a lot of products, a lot of kachikan,、uh, what's a kachikan?、Um, value,、yeah. core value、mm. um, of Japan is very,、um, I say,、um, sophisticated. If you go to McDonald's in Japan, you, you are more respected than if you go to McDonald's in the US.、Mm. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's some good McDonald's in the US too, but like, this, like generally speaking,、um, Japanese people's a r u b a i t o are more polite. Or like, if you go to shop, people are more polite in Japan.、Um, or like, there's、um, the quality of、uh, buildings are、um, very,、um, still, is, right now, as, as for now, it still is、um, very、uh, clean. And、mm-hmm. like,、um, if you go to select shop, you get a lot of different stuff. Yeah. Japanese people are very good at、um, uh, collecting、um, goods from all over the world, except we don't have good pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> I, I guess if you say so. <laughs> at, the, at the same time, you, 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 you have an advantage of being able to speak English. So you get more, like, if you know English, you can get more information from the internet.、Mm. And the more information you have, or like,、um, You will have bigger vision and you tend to become more、um, liberal、yeah. and you see a bigger picture and you get the fastest、um, information.、Mm. I mean, I think that's, that's the reason why I got to, I'm still in this industry for over 20 years.、Um, I think one of the main concerns people have, and maybe this is what Verbal's parents were concerned about, is when anyone says, I'm going to be part of the music industry, I think the first concern is money. So, of course. From what you've observed in your you know, 20 plus years in the industry, do you think, especially for INTA graduates, as you said, who tend to go to like finance and you know, medicine and whatever? Yeah, finance, that's the word.、Um, yeah. Like, what、uh, do you think that the risk, taking that risk, like what, what kind of advice would you give to people who are feeling a bit on, you know, a, a little unsure if they really want to go into the music industry? Well, this is、um, totally my point of view, but、um, there's risk everywhere.、Mm. Look what's happening in the world Corona.、Mm. Did someone expect that? No. And are people being fired? Yeah, a lot of people are being fired. The risk is everywhere. And,、uh, uh, and same with the music industry. I mean, environment keeps on changing.、Mm. But、uh, back in the day when we, were, we, when we debuted, all the stuff was sold in CD and, and the monetization was much easier.、Mm. But、um, since the internet revolution created、um, a subscription or,、um, or being able to copy music, the,、uh, made the CDs、um, 
value much less. Mm. So yeah, we have that, to adapt. I see. That, that's a great point, though. There's risk everywhere, and that you know, no matter what, I, I guess you just yeah. have to take take that uh, take that risk. The important thing about it is um, survival of the fittest. Mm. There's a term. I think that's Darwin. I guess. Yes. Um, I'm not very familiar with evolution, but um, the, like, they say survival of the fittest. They don't say survival of the strongest. The fittest means you're being able to adapt or you, you're being able to foresee what's going to happen. I didn't mean to cut you yes. off. I'm really curious. In the music yeah. industry, what does, that, what, what does that mean then in the music industry? Uh, so who's, who's adapting to the sort of current changes, uh, whether it's Corona or even before Corona, sort of the internet revolution, and which groups are failing to adapt? The whole music industry is a mess right now in Japan. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why is because change didn't happen abruptly in Japan hmm. Un until iPhone was introduced in Japan. Interesting. And is that because the consumers never really used online platforms like Spotify and you know Apple Music until the iPhone? So this is, yeah. This is, this is even before Spotify or any other subscription services, but we call it Garake. It's, mm. uh, it stands for ga 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 Galapagos or Galapagos? Galapagos. Um, do you know Galapagos Island? Yeah, we're going right back to Darwin, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It had its own ecosystem and um, had like uh, different like types of animal there because it was totally secluded. Mm. And we call it Garapagos, uh, Garapagos Syndrome or whatever, you know. Um, but we, we say Garapagotteru. That means um, we never, we were very secluded. Garapagos Gensho. Garapagos Gensho. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Kondo tsukatte mitai. Yeah. But, so um, people in Japan did not use much internet back then. Mm. Internet was only for nerds, and because in Japan, the cellular phone evolved very uniquely, and it was very well made. Mm. People just could use cellular phone and did not go to... So what that means is um, people still buy CD. Well, mm. if you're more computer literate and know uh, how to use internet, you can find pirate um, copied music. Mm. Naps, Napstar, Maxstar, um, a lot of different stuff, you know, P2P. Um, U.S. had to evolve very quickly for that. Mm. While Japan um, did not ha have to use the internet and use like the old Ketai, which was very sophisticated, people were still buying CD. But when iPhone came in, things started to change totally. Interesting. So the monetization, you know, the decrease of CD sales, is it the artists that are taking the hit or is it the um, companies that are taking the hit or is it a combination? Everyone, everyone. Japan is, was the, you know how um, there's a decrease and the numbers go down, right? Yeah. Like a lot of co countries, like even countries in Asia, aside from Japan, it just, the CD sales dropped suddenly. Mm. Well, Japanese, um, it wasn't steep. It was very um, gradually going down and down. And people were kind of worried that it's going to go, you know, lower every year. But people weren't, people were very concerned about today instead of tomorrow. Mm. So, and finally now Japan is facing the decrease of CD. And I've been saying this since like 10 years ago, but nobody like, you know, they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, we got to do this for now. But I was warning a lot of people, but, you know, they weren't aware. And um, it's happening. And a lot of music industry, they, they still don't know how to use SNS to promote or um, they're still finding a way to monetize the best way. Wow. So that is, yeah. Well, Garapako Sugensho. I'll try yeah. using that future that it just sounds like uh, yeah i mean japan japan is in a good state when they are concerned about selling their goods abroad or are looking abroad if you look mm -hmm. at the meiji era 
or if you look at the um, post World War II, Japan was very con concerned in、um, trying to sell their、um, products abroad or learn a lot of different stuff from foreign countries. Right now, Japan is again secluded, and、um, although they have this、um, gateway to the world called internet, well, one big factor is Japanese people cannot speak English, so、um, that's one factor that、um, people can't get a lot of information, but. At the same time, Japanese a lot of people are just、um, becoming、um, introverted or、uh, inner-minded. Yeah, and、um, so yeah, we're not in a good situation right now. I think as for being living in Japan, that's 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 unfortunate to hear.、Um, maybe this is a slightly more positive note. You mentioned the word innovation when I was looking at some of the other interviews. Innovation,、mm -hmm. innovative music. So I was wondering,、mm -hmm. for you personally, you know, what does it mean in regards to innovative sounds? And you've mentioned how you know it's just so much easier to get various sounds that used to be difficult. Right, fifteen years ago, you needed a specific instrument. Now you can just get a sampling online. Oh yes,、so、yes, yes. How has that changed your way of producing music? Like, because it's harder now, right, than to make a sound when all those sounds have already been created. Yeah, it's, it's it's very tough to create something original, and、um, it's it's like you know, let's say you like、um, Skrillex,、mm -hmm. um, you can create Skrillex's sound in ten minutes if you look at YouTube, or if you use a web service that、um, has all the sound presets, you can sound just like him. So it's very easy to sound like him and become the、um, the, the it's it's like a it's like copy of music. It's、uh, mm -hmm. So it's very hard to make something original, and、um, back in the day, even you wanted to create something similar to Skrillex, you were using、um, different in different instruments, different synthesizers, and you could never be. You try to sound like him, but since you're using a different instrument,、hmm. you can't sound like him, and that became original.、Hmm. But right now, everyone uses the same instruments because of the、um, computer revolution in music. Yeah. So what I try to do is,、um, I, I still use those. It's like, let's say there's cheeseroni.、Um, yeah. You can you can make macaroni at any time very easily. It's very、mm -hmm. convenient, and but it will taste the same everywhere, right? Yeah. So you'd rather want to make things from scratch. Get cheese and get macaroni by yourself, and、mm -hmm. that's what I try to do recently. So another point I wanted to、uh, touch upon with uh, uh, music, and this, this is、uh, the last question,、um, is that this online platform. So you've, you, and as you said earlier, you were sort of one of the earliest people to talk about this online, offline. It's a very playground. Yeah, like the accessibility, and、mm -hmm. we we live in an interesting era where already pre-corona there was a lot of changes happening in the music industry, and now with corona. What do you foresee as sort of like the music industry, like at twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two? What does it look like from from an insider's perspective? So, so Nick, let me go back to twenty twenty. Well, we were still in twenty twenty, but、um, the music industry deeply relied on doing a live show, or doing several live shows in for the monetization.、Mm. So what? So since Corona happened. That's a big, big、um, damage to the music industry because since you cannot do live in Corona, you cannot make money.、Hmm. I'm very fortunate that I own a media called Block FM, and also we've been doing a lot of、um, live streaming. We had the knowledge for live streaming. We are one of the few companies in Japan. Doing very well during the Corona era, people were, people need the online platform in order to、um, monetize their、um, products or or performances. I was wondering, have you, have you found people to be a bit more resistant though in regards to dishing out money、uh, when it comes to virtual entertainment? Oh no, people are looking for anything right now that works. But some artists dislike doing stream shows.、Mm. Yeah, because I've I've noticed people selling their streams and that. Yeah, you know, sell, selling stream is still tough.、Mm. But、um, but what we do is we work with corp、uh, corporates. We work with a company called Glow, 
actually British American Tobacco, or we work with the Tokyo Agency. We work with um, uh, uh, Smirnoff. We work with uh, a lot of different companies who's trying to um, promote what they're doing, and um, they want musicians show and be able to promote their products. And uh, we were fortunate that we were one of the um, few companies who did streaming. Mm. So block. So I have two companies. One's Tachytelic. That's my company, mm. and that's the it's a music production company. We create music at Tachytelic, mm. and Block FM is a media. It's B L O C K dot F M. You can just go to the website. We do radio. We do uh, TV shows, um, or music TV shows, um, and we do news. Mm. And Block FM is doing really well this year. Well, Tachytelic is not doing as well as last year. So back back to your question. Back to your question. Uh, Nick, you, said, you mentioned about what do I foresee in 21 and 22, right? Yeah. And that is a very good question. But at the same time, um, it's, there's no way you can um, predict with this corona situation. Mm. It, might, it might end quickly. Someone might miraculously find a um, vaccine. Maybe the virus uh, evolves and becomes a different thing and get tougher. We still don't know. We still don't have the data. It's, it's, everything is so new. Um, so we have to see the both side, both, type, both situations, what's going to happen. So mm -hmm. uh, we just have to keep on looking um, what's going to happen. And also, um, right now, streaming is working. But when Corona is over, it's going to change. People won't rely completely on streaming. But one thing that I... Um, predict is that people like specifically Japan um, mm. people in Japan were not very used to um, telephone or um, the online conference um, people never used zoom before or some other um, we call this the media or app um, I don't know what you call this um, but platform because of corona people start to use zoom and other um, platforms you know um, hangout whatever so and so and now people are like are used to this and some people are like still say hey we'd rather meet a person to person but some people prefer hey man i like to stay in my house and just have a conference so since people experience it it's going to be a uh, hybrid type of situation yeah and, and i think and i think the same thing goes with the music there are people who would like to see everything live yeah at, yeah i have some of those friends at, <laughs> yeah yeah. At, at the same time, peop, um, people prefer seeing from their house. Hmm. So we have to be ready for being to adapt both of them. Wow. So and yeah, it, it, the ti timing is crucial too. Hmm. Timing is essential. That's, and it's a great point you made too that, I mean, there's just so many factors that will affect 2021. Uh, it's, it, we don't even know when it's going to end, but, but it is a great point you, you brought up that a lot of things will be changed forever. As you said, with like remote working, it seems like a lot of people outside the music industry will continue to work from home. And mm -hmm. in a sense that might affect the music industry too, because people are going to be home more. Maybe people are going to move out to Chiba at Kanagawa. Mm. And, yeah. You know, they're not going to be able to make the clubhouses in Shibuya uh, the way they used to. Yeah, totally. Totally. Nick. You're right. Um, with, you're totally definitely you're correct with that. And um, so once again, timing is crucial and um, the, the term survival of the fittest mm. is, is crucial. And being able to see what's going around the, around the world is very, very um, important. And this takes us to the end of the podcast. What I'd like to do at the very end is I ask the guests um, what is coming up in their lives the next few years, next few decades. So uh, mm -hmm. if you'd like to share with the audience uh, what is on the horizon for 2021, 2022, and who knows, 2040, 50. <laughs> I know it's hard to think that far out in the future, but uh, if, if you do have any specific plans that you'd like to share. I would like to do an online, offline uh, music festival. And also as for myself, I'd like to become, I'll, I'll keep on doing M-Flow, but um, I would like to create a girls band which can go international from Japan. Really cool, big ideas. Excellent to hear M-Flow is still going. Um, I mean, God, you guys have a friendship of what, 30 plus years and the band's yeah, been around yeah. 20 plus years. It's yeah. Quite, quite extraordinary. And um, yeah, yeah, pretty I, long. I, yeah. 
th thank you so much uh, for, for joining us uh, today. And um, I really appreciate you taking the time out of the day. And to, yeah, yeah, thank you yeah. so much. Um, I'm going to definitely listen to some M-Flow tonight. And, Please, uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's good seeing you.